right in front of the camera there, buddy. Ten foot, twelve foot. This is going to ignite a few of them. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. G'day guys, Jason from the Outer Farm here. We're actually on the trial property this morning. We're heading out to the Outer Farm. Exciting today. It's a monumental occasion where we finally got our timeless fencing system set up on the Outer Farm through a section of property that's never been grazed before. We turned it on, went live three days ago, and then today we're finally going to move in our livestock in there. But first, I've got to get this watering system together. This is the system I'm going to be using when I'm cell grazing and moving my livestock through the system. So it's a portable unit on sleds that we can tow behind on the quad. Mate, you're right in front of the camera there, buddy. Trying to do a video, mate. Gonna go ahead and assemble this hose now to go on the side of this float. Just gonna put tape on all the joints, stop them from leaking. What I've also got is spiral cover. So you spiral that around, that hose, it's a Pope three quarter inch hose. It's a little bit soft. We have used it in the paddock when we run the cattle and they put the, fill the water up manually and they haven't crushed it. But out there, because it's only one watering point, we're going to put this spiral wound crush sheath around it. See if it works, it doesn't get crushed. Especially in winter time, I know hoses get brittle here and they snap. Hopefully that'll make it last a bit longer.
We'll see how that goes. See if it's crush proof or not. It snaps on there. And this one here, that just goes into that watering system I made out there on the property. Take off the turf valve cover, snap, put that on there obviously, snap that in, and that gravity feeds, that float, float comes up, the float underneath this trough, and as the cows drink out obviously, it automatically fills up. We'll head out and we'll install it. Let's get her up the back of the ute and put in position. Make sure that's off. You get paranoid when you get bitten a few times. Doesn't tickle. This is a first for everybody. First time we've ever used the watering system. First time we've ever had the electric fence on. It's going to be the first time for the cattle to graze in this area since we've had the property. Exciting times. Things are finally starting to happen. I never got around to do a commissioning inspection on all these yet, so this will be the first time I've actually tried one of these that are gravity fed from the tank. We've done it from up the top in the fruit trees, which is direct from the solar panel, but never from the tank. This is just gravity fed, it's not pump fed. So hopefully, oi, definitely enough pressure. That's heat. Just gotta clean this out first, it's a bit dirty. Oh, that's a I can't believe the pressure on that. That have to be spraying. Oh, easily. Ten foot, twelve foot. That's awesome pressure. You can see I haven't done the commissioning inspection. That's the first air pocket I've I've had. I've got to go around and do all of them like this. Because when they're joining together, oh there we go, dirty water. That's what I was worried about. I've got to go and do all 37 on the property just to get that dirt out in case there's any loose rocks. I'd hate to get a rock through the float flotation device on this watering, on this trough, and then block it up. So the idea I'll do, I'm going to do a commissioning inspection video, go around and test all of them, see much mud. We had a spatter of mud there come out. I'll just wash this out and we'll hook her up to the trough. So far, so good. I'm excited about that pressure. That was ma massive. get him hooked up and we'll see if he fills up. Generally we wouldn't be going through the electric fence like this. I specifically designed it. This is for when we're cell grazing out this area. I've got him all the way through the paddock. This watering point through there. Because the grass in there is about a metre high, I don't want to put it in the paddock in case I don't find it because this is the only water point I've got in this paddock because they haven't been here. I know they'll walk the fence line so they'll come across this and they'll find water. If I put it in there and they don't find it, potentially cattle have got no issues of smelling out. I just want to make it easy access. First thing cattle do generally is walk their boundaries to find out the area they're in. So I know they're going to hit this watering point. But otherwise, when we start cell grazing, it's going to be in the middle of the paddock. righty -oh, time will tell. Let's have a look.
only I'll find one at this point in time I can only find one flaw to the design and that's because that is at ground level and you've got that void below ground level when it rains these watering points do fill up with water but if that's the floor well so be it it's not it's no harm I just snap it in also there's a water reserve there that'll slowly leach out I'm thinking in times of drought when everything else around me is dry if they've got that'd be at least I reckon oh, have to be five litres of water there I'm not sure what that's in gallons that leaches out in time of drought it should be easy to find these watering points if the cows ever snap these timeless four footers off because it should be a green area because that'll slowly leach into the ground and hydrate around it so that should be green now it's time to move them in so exciting it's been like I said years since we've first bought that property they haven't grazed out there I've got an empty reel in front of me but what we're hoping the majority of these have been hot wire trained and they know when I grab a reel or step-ins they're going to be moved to fresher pasture so hopefully this is going to ignite a few of them to get up and follow then the rest of the herd should come Right, come on girls, come on girls, come on girls, come on girls, come on, come on girls, come on girls, come on girls, come on, girls. Come on. I missed it there before, they got a bit excited, they took off halfway down the paddock kicking and bucking, Tom I got the camera they're out of sight, they're just headed back now it's a good sign, all of them their heads down munching on grass making money 
a lot of this has come to seed but because it's later on in winter now they've got no choice but to eat that pasture it's probably only got 50 percent energy in it but if they're hungry enough they will eat the green pickings and leave a lot of it that's dead because there's so many in there and they're herded together they'll be laying that carbon down the paddock I'm slashing at the moment was about the same height and I had them in there for like two weeks I reckon 50% lay down adding that thatch layer back to the ground and that decays and that's your armour and that's your new topsoil as it degrades supposed to get three inches of rain in coming days probably the next two days that thatch layer which they're adding down and is stopping that rain from hitting the ground and causing compaction it hits it stops the velocity and seep through stops compaction in your soil when you stop compaction you stop runoff when you stop runoff you stop erosion On that note, I'd better get, get to it. I've got a couple of more paddocks I want to slash before this rain hits. So have a good morning, have a terrific afternoon, and an awesome evening, guys. Where are you watching this from? And we'll catch you later.